Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another video. Today we have a pack opening video. We have a bunch. We got a 50 pack. We have 10 ball and packs. We have, I think, every single headliner pack, at least one multiple on a lot of them. And then we have some like guaranteed stuff as well. So like and subscribe if you guys enjoy. And we're just going to start ripping away. We're going to end with the guaranteed packs. I have not opened packs in a while. I just kind of have them accumulate. Things will uh, will look good. And we'll pull like a trout or something. That would be kind of sick. I would take a Mike Trout pull, to be honest with absolutely everybody. A silver. I guess we'll take a silver. I need something higher than a gold, maybe. Feels like a good goal. Michael Wacha. Wacha. We just need to start pulling at least golds because uh, a bunch of Kevin Biggios and Daniel Mengens, Mengdens, Mengdens is not doing it for me, believe it or not. So as I'm recording this, yesterday was July 4th, which does mean that today is July 5th. But uh, went with the family to go see some fireworks. We don't light them off anymore at this point. We just we live in a place where that's not really super feasible. Uh, both with like weather because the dry grass, and then also we kind of live in a city, so it's kind of frowned upon. But anyway, we went out to uh, go see some fireworks. We saw a couple of shows just around. So what you do if you're in Fort Worth, you go to Trinity River which is a big river through the middle of the city. And you just, you go and watch. Uh, there's shows around. So if you sit on like the banks of the river, you can see two or three different shows and the city kind of splits them up to where they're not all at the same time. And so we saw one show kind of on the east side of town. And then the second show is supposed to start at 930. As we get a gold, Robbie Ray will take it, I guess. Second show is supposed to start at 9.30, and uh, we don't see it go off. That guy's arms look incredibly thick. Chadwick Trump. Also, why have they photoshopped? This is the oddest photoshop I've ever seen. Anyway, second show is supposed to start at 9.30. It's like 9.40, 9.42, uh, and they're pretty punctual with uh, these things. And so they're like 12 minutes late and we're like, what has happened to the, sh the show? That's like the main one in the city. Everybody's kind of there to go watch this show and they're like 12 minutes late. And so we're, uh, we're looking around, we get a diamond. Story will have to be on pause for a second. Let's see what we get. Give me, it's a Met. Did Alonzo? Did Rom? Scherzer? It is Alonzo. Honestly, free diamond will take it. I feel like Pete's player model could be a little bit thicker. Not in an offensive way. I just feel like maybe. Anyway, we I go on Twitter, right, to go see, like, what is happening. Has somebody died? Basically. And uh, it turns out they started the fireworks show and they made it about two or three minutes. And then there was a significant grass fire. <laughs> and so they had to cancel the show but they had no real way of telling people hey the show has been canceled because it's like there's like a spot that you can go to watch the show like officially which is a place called panther island uh which is nice and so they all knew but the people just like around the city on the banks of the trinity river and like parking lots and rooftops and stuff around Fort Worth had no idea. So we were all just sitting there kind of waiting for like 30 minutes and it never happened. But then the 10 o'clock show started like behind everything. So we get two Evan Longoria's in the same pack. And so then there's just a mass state of confusion because we were like, that's not supposed to be the second show. But they just started firing because I guess they heard that the other fireworks show was done and they were like, well, now we got to go. And so there was just mass chaos and confusion throughout the North Texas fireworks industry last night. And it was honestly a great time. 
it wasn't, but it was at the same time. You know what I'm saying, chat? We got a cat. Get this off of my screen. Get quick sold. Get it off of my screen. All right, one diamond from a 50-pack is not the worst thing of all time. Got 10 ballins. Would love another diamond, clearly. Zach Wheeler, he could go diamond. I feel like they were quick with the demotion of Zach Wheeler, so hopefully he is able to uh, make it back into the diamond category. Wander Franco is here, Jonathan India, and Luis Guillorme, who has cooled off, unfortunately, for a lot of Met fans. Give me Trout. I'm not asking for a lot game. Maybe I am. But give me like a Trout. I've never pulled a Trout. I would settle for an Otani or a Jose Ramirez, to be honest with you. It feels like we are not going to be getting either of those based on how the first little bit of pack luck has gone. Last ball in pack, double gold. That is awfully tough. Semyon maybe could work his way back into a diamond by the end of the year, but he was pretty abysmal at the start. So now we have a lot of headliners. I feel like we're probably missing at least one, but from 1 to 22, it feels like we have a bunch of them. What are the odds on this? 1 in 10? So we should probably pull some diamonds. At least a couple, hopefully. I would even settle for like a low diamond at this point. That did remind me. So at some point in my life, I lived in southern Missouri, and I worked at a summer camp, uh, which we'll rename Nameless for legal reasons. But, so I worked at the summer camp, and we decided that, I didn't decide this, the camp director decided it would be a great idea, Spencer Strider's not a terrible silver, it would be a great idea to buy as we're going to have to wait again. Apparently, telling fireworks stories is the way Rodon with the stirrups. I feel like his mustache could be thicker on the player model. But I'm not judging. We also get Deekman, who's basically a diamond. But he was like, yo, 4th of July is coming up. It's in the middle of the week, so none of the uh, people... None of the counselors are going to be able to celebrate because we're all at a camp with kids. So he went in and he bought fireworks into the town in southern Missouri. And we were like sick. And he very quickly realized when he got back that he did not know how to shoot off fireworks. And also, none of his leadership team knew how to shoot off fireworks. And this is where the story really starts because I have shot off fireworks before. And somehow, I guess, that had come up in conversation at like at some point in the beginning of the year. As Ken Giles is still in the league, that is shocking to me. At some point at the beginning of the summer, I guess it came up in conversation that I had shot off fireworks before. I'm not really sure how that came up, but it did. And so he knew that I had, and he also knew that a lot of the other people at camp had not, and he didn't need to be asking have you shot off fireworks because everyone's going to be like, yes, so they can go shoot off fireworks. So my man, his name is Taylor, walks up to me and is like, yo, you've shot off fireworks. I need you to come out here and like at least get us started and explain like how to do it in a semi-safe way. Because we're also doing this with kids on the camp. And so the idea was we're going to do like a mini fireworks show for these kids. And I was like, okay, cool. So I walk out there. We have these kids set up on one side of the field. About 300 yards away is the other side of the field. And that's where we're going to like launch the fireworks from. Me and him are walking across this field towards the fireworks. And we're about 20 yards away. And we see one of them light uh, a firework. Like one of those. So if you never shot off fireworks, there's like a tube situation that you like, you put the firework in this tube and then it shoots up and then it explodes. So they stuck the firework in the tube, lit the fuse. The fuse like went and then went down and into the tube. So the firework's about to shoot off and then the tube falls over. Like 
this way and like is pointing directly at the, the unlit fireworks and also at us because we are behind the unlit fireworks. Give me Sportsman Park, I guess it's cool. And another diamond. Here we go. I'm telling you guys, if you need diamonds, just tell old fireworks stories. And this is the way to do it. Give me Tatis. Joe Musgrove. You know what? We'll take it. Quantity over quality, I always say. The tube falls over, is pointing directly at the unlit fireworks and the people behind the unlit fireworks, and it shoots off, but it doesn't shoot really. It like shoots and then sticks like into the ground and then like drives itself into the ground. And me and Taylor are watching this happen. And I just am yelling obscenities. And then I'm like, gah, run. <laughs> and so there is just mayhem as we are all running away from this firework. And it explodes. And it's one of these like industrial size fireworks. I don't know why they decided to start with the biggest firework we had. But it was like one of those that you would see like on the 4th of July or like on New Year's Eve, like on TV when the ball drops in New York. And so it explodes and we are all running. And that is not the problem. The problem was that caught some of the unlit fireworks on fire and a couple more of them just blew up in their bags. And so we are like running and panicking as there is just smoke and explosion. I don't even know what G-form is, by the way, but there is just smoke and explosions everywhere. And we are panicking and running for our lives. And I have it ingrained in my head what it would look like from across the field. And I know it had to look funny because there was a mix of terrified screaming children as well as laughing children. And so that is the closest I've ever come to death. Also, important if you are shooting up fireworks, uh, make sure the grass underneath you is not dry because that can be a problem later when the like shrapnel lands and then catches the dry grass on fire. You generally want to avoid that uh, at all costs. We're going to open one of these actually as we get another diamond, which means it's time for another fireworks story after this. Give me a diamond. Is it Joe Musgrove again? It's not. It's Taylor Rogers. You're Tyler Rogers? Taylor Rogers. Whichever one is on the Padres. So I was about 10 years old. Now I have a cousin that's about a year younger than me who's about, uh, I mean, at that point, he would have been about nine, nine and a half. My brother's a couple years younger than me, so he would have been about seven and a half or eight, give or take. And we had some, like, small leftover fireworks at some point, I believe on like a New Year's Eve when we were still in South Texas. And so it was a couple of days later. It was nothing major. It was like little black cats, which if you don't know what those are, are just like the little like firecrackers that you like light and you can throw them and they explode like in the air. Nothing too major. But we also had Roman candles, which if you don't know what those are, Roman candles, we get another diamond, the Astros jersey sick roman candles you like you light it's like a tube and you light it and you're holding the tube and then out of the tube shoots these like little flares basically i guess would be the easiest way to describe it uh and so my brother who again is like seven eight maybe at this time lights the tube and we're just watching him do it he's pretty nonchalant about it he lights it he's holding it in a way that we're like, this is fine. He's not going to murder anybody. And that's fine, except for none of us realize he's holding it backwards. So instead of shooting it out away from him, he shoots it directly at his leg. And so it hits his shorts and his shorts kind of catch on fire. And so he panics, clearly, as you would expect, and just kind of throws Roman candle tube away from him which is fine, but those things don't just shoot off one. They shoot off like five or ten. 
and he's only shot one. And so he's also sh- like thrown this with some significant loft. And so for the next two or three little flares, it's just helicoptering through the air, shooting at everybody. And so once again, there is mass chaos as me and my cousin Nathan are running around trying not to die. And we have a smaller cousin who at this point would have been like five or six who is inside watching through the window and is just cackling as me and Nate are taking evasive maneuvers. And uh, then the tube lands and the next like five or six just shoot off directly into the dry grass of South Texas. And it lights our, uh, I guess it would be like our grandparents' in-laws. I don't know. It was my uncle's wife's parents, whatever that makes them. It lights their backyard on fire. And so me and Nate, being the quick thinkers that we are, instead of taking our water bottles and dumping it on the fire, we just run over and start like kind of stepping on it like you would do for a small fire, which I guess in hindsight wasn't the worst decision. But uh, (laughs) we start stepping on it. And there is just a lot of commotion outside because we're the only four outside. And our uncle walks out and is like, are you guys good? And we are just like yelling and like stamping on the fire. And we're like, yep, never been better. And he just is kind of looking at the backyard being on fire. Caleb's shorts now having a burn hole in them. And my cousin Joe cackling inside. And he's like, Okay. And then just leaves. And he left like people with the combined age of like 17, maybe in charge of a small grass fire. Now we did put it out because we're not dumb, which it has to be said is a win for my family because that could have gone so poorly. But uh, yeah, those are the, those are the main fireworks stories. I was thinking about it. I was like, I need a way to tell these I thought a pack opening would be a great way to do that, as we will have to settle for O'Neill Cruz. He's got a pretty sick swing. He's been kind of dynamite since he came to the majors. So, feel pretty good about that. All right. Choose one gold or better player with a highly increased chance to find the featured headliners players. Guaranteed to find the future's the uniform item, so I guess we're getting the Royals jersey no matter what. Okay, sick. Round two of two. Okay, so we did we got shafted. <laughs> we did not get the gold around. I guess we're gonna take Juan Soto. And now we have an always intense pack. I would love to get the rare round on this. I would love it. Will it happen? Hard to say. Tom Glavin would kind of be sick to have. Uh, but we're just we're just gonna have to see what we get. And we didn't get the rare round, which is awfully tough. But oh well. So I don't know who we're gonna take here. You know what? Juan Pierre for the pinch run abilities. That is the move. hundred percent. Don't get it twisted. Last couple of packs here, they're guaranteed. We already know what we're gonna get. We're gonna take Seth Lugo because I could use another bullpen arm uh, that is a righty. They gave him hitting stats. Look at that. Probably to get him up to a 90. Uh, We are going to take Lugo. So we'll do that. And then finally, this last pack, I've been thinking about it for a long time. I guess I'll show you guys the team if you made it this far in the video. Uh, We're still no money spent. And we have a lot of future stars now. So this is kind of the team we're rolling with at the current moment in time. But. Yeah, I don't know. It's It'll be interesting. We need a starting pitcher. But uh, right now, we don't really have any options. And that's also not an option to pick from the pack. So it is a little bit tough, but that is where we are at. I really kind of want to try out Brett Beatty because I feel like we have a lot of infielders. That is who we're going to take, at least to start. If not, we'll just sell him for 14 k or whatever it is. Uh, but we're going to do that. And that's going to do it for the video. Hope you guys liked the, uh, the stories of fireworks and near-death experiences. 
We'll open one more pack for the road. Give me trout. Did not. That's going to do it for the video, guys. Comment Griffin Jacks if you made it to the very end, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.